Welcome back to Inside of Her C-Suite. We have a special edition today. We are thrilled to be having a conversation with some of the co-authors of a fascinating sort of anthropological project that I think is going to impact women around the world. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, Mickey, let me start with you. You know, your work in branding and looking at strategy and so forth uh, is really wonderful. You've been doing this a while. What do you love about it? What I love about it the most is that you can actually reinvent yourself or your brand uh, from scratch and you can build anything you want. But I think the most challenging thing for me when I do branding is to explain to people how well branding works for you. And I think that's pretty much why I'm in it is to make people see that it works for them. Thank you. And uh, Ruth, your history, your background as a businesswoman is extraordinary. But one of the things I found fascinating about you and what you do is you're a single mother of three. That's like a business in its own, isn't it? Most definitely, yes. My, my mother, who's passed already, has always said to me that I've always been very fond of the males, as in the sense that I get along with them very well. She always used to say to me, it's poetic justice that I had three daughters. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because, as you say, it's, it is an exercise of note, um, different characters, different people all the time, and being a woman myself, it does lead to certain challenges and clashes sure. at times, yes. And you both bring a wealth of experience to this new product, from fed up to fabulous. Take us back to the beginning stages. Obviously, you guys have a relationship with J.T. Fox, who is sort of like sort of behind the scenes. He wrote the foreword to this phenomenal book, From Fed Up to Fabulous. How did it all begin? Did you get a phone call from J.T., like, look, be on this, or did you call him? What happened? Okay, uh, can I tell the story? You right. tell the story. Um, last year in November, all of us, we didn't know each other back then, most of us. We met at a business conference in Orlando, Florida, that was hosted by J.T. Fox. And all of us had been sort of students of J.T. Fox organization. And after the ladies all met between 800 people from 51 countries that were there, there was a kind of a kinship, like you could feel the energy of the person that you were speaking to. And when I got back to South Africa, I kept thinking and thinking and thinking about this. And the one day I just picked up the phone and I phoned these ladies and I said, I've got this idea and this is what I want to do. And only I had from the beginning in mind to ask JD to write the forward because that is how we met. But we never knew if he was going to say yes. Um, but he was very happy to do it, especially when he heard that it was the bunch of us and that we met at one of his events. Wow. And when you heard about it, Ruth, was there even a question? Or was it just instinctively, I'm going, I'm doing it? No, I, I, was, I was all in. Because with the vision that Mickey had sketched about where she saw this going, for me it was going to be an absolutely phenomenal project. In the sense that seven different women from six different countries around the world and on top of it from four different generations. That was, for me, it was going to be the recipe for, for magic to happen. Absolutely. And in looking at what's come out of this collaboration, that's exactly what has gone to happen. Mickey, four generations from different countries. I think there's a woman from Egypt, there's an American. What, what do you guys have in common and what's really different? What have you discovered? I think what we have in common is all of us, besides having a story to tell and overcoming our stories, uh, all of us have a passion. We've got a passion to really take those stories and be a trailblazer to help other women to overcome the things that they face, whether it be in business or in life. So our shared vision in this book as well is to inspire and uplift women through this book. So that's definitely what we all have in common and very dynamic women as well, of course. Uh, what we've got, what we're different, I mean, we're seven different women. So we've got seven different personalities. But we tend to just, all of us when we're together, the energy in the room, it's actually amazing because we end up just coaching each other and, and you know, it's, it's actually so amazing to see the dynamic when all the ladies are together. Were there any moments where you wanted to give up? I mean, because putting together a book is, is not easy. Uh, I've just re -released, re released my fourth book and I noticed that, that depending on the publisher and how it's published and the editing team, there's always going to be either squabbles or something. Were there moments when you wanted to like choke somebody? Uh, <laughs> <ooh. laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know what? I think it's the biggest challenge for us was the fact that we are in different countries. So just having a meeting between the seven of us was quite challenging, um, especially with the different time zones and you know finding a, a adequate time for everyone that's not either late in the evening or very early in the morning for one of the seven was quite challenging. I think it was just a matter of what made this book happen is the fact that we knew it had to get out there. It was something that had to be birthed. And although we all have extremely busy schedules, 
um, we actually, we, we put deadlines to this. I mean, every single step of the way, we had a deadline to work towards and, and pretty much we said, if the deadline's not met, you're out. Okay. So um, the ladies were actually fantastic in meeting those deadlines and, and making time for meetings and things. Wait, Ruth, what did you learn about yourself in writing? Is this your first contribution to a book and your first publishing or? Yes, this is my, my first contribution. I, th I think for me, Tim, and it's strange that you asked this question because when I was thinking about the interview yesterday, I actually thought by myself, what, what was it, you know, what, what did I face? A lot of the conversations that we've had amongst the authors ourselves is, what do I write about? What do I share? Can I share this? Um, am I going to upset people? All these sorts of things, all these th feelings and these thoughts cross your mind. And you know what, fundamentally you have got to make a decision and decide, you know what, I'm going to do this. If I'm going to upset some people, so be it. But there's so much value in what we all need to share that others can learn from that I think we've got to put ourselves and our concerns and our worries on the back burner to really set ourselves up to get those stories out there. So I think that is for me where the, the biggest opening was and it's been awesome fun. Well, congratulations for being part of your first publishing project because it's a big deal. People don't realize that less than like 0.4% of the people in the world have been a part of something like this. So congratulations. Mickey, why these specific seven? You, I'm sure there was a pool of people you could have chosen. Why these? Timothy, I work a lot on intuition as well. And when I met these seven ladies, well, the six ladies um, that I co-authored with, some of them I had brief conversations with literally for one minute. The others I obviously got to know a little bit better. It's very difficult when there's 800 people at an event to kind of network with everybody. <laughs> but there was a certain energy about all of them and I could feel that this was the energy and up to this day, I absolutely know I made the right choice. Right. Wow, tell us a bit more about some of the rest of them. Quick well, um, firstly we've got obviously Anne Turner who is originally from Egypt. She's residing in the UK now. Also a coach teaching people about how to, uh, you know, a life coach. Uh, teaching people how to, to structure their lives and, and things like that. Then we have Chantella Richardson from the USA, also a phenomenal lady. Uh, she's from Chicago, if I remember correctly. Has she right. been to the continent before? Yes, they were actually, all of the authors except for the one author who couldn't make it, were actually in South Africa now for a tour that we did, oh, wow. just in August for Women's Month to launch the book. And they had such a great time. Um, the other author we've got is Regan Hillier. She's originally from New Zealand and residing in Bali at the moment. Also a coach, business coaching. Residing in Bali. Yes. How she's beautiful a, is that? She's, she's what we call a location <laughs> free coach. Like oh she yes. can work anywhere and she actually sends me photos on the beach with her laptop working. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we, all, we all are, Tim, yeah. believe yeah. me. <laughs> And then there is Christine Overby, who is from Norway, also a coach. All of the ladies are actually coaches, um, different types oh, of coaches, wow, okay, yes. Uh, who am I leaving out? Ruth, uh, Veronica Sosa, how can I forget Miss Sosa? She's from Venezuela, currently residing in um, uh, Belgium. Belgium, that's right. And what are people fed up with? I think a lot of people are fed up with a lot of things. Um, particularly, I think what women will resonate with in this book is that it takes quite a lot for women to become fed up. We go through quite a lot before we're <laughs> at that point where you're fed up. And whether it be that you're fed up with just your general day to day, whether it be with something specific in your life, I think that fed upness is what gets us to a point where we finally go, what is my passion? What is my purpose? What do I want to do with my life? Because there is more to life. And I think that's, that's the point where you get fed up is when you realize there's more to this, there's more to me. And that's where you start shining. Here's what, what's interesting for me about the gender equality dealing with social injustice is the idea that people underestimate how damaging patriarchy has been. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are still countries in the world like Yemen where if a woman goes to court, she is considered half a witness. You need two women to be one witness. You know, these are things that I'm sure people are fed up with uh, and people are tired. But going from fed up to fabulous, that trajectory have you seen that it's wearing people down? And how will the book address helping people from being worn down? I actually just want to mention one of our co-authors as well, Christine Overby, who is from Norway. And, and she's facing some of those challenges in Norway as a businesswoman as well. And I think it's a matter of, in those countries, and, and what we're trying to do through this book as well, is to show you that it's up to you and it's a choice you need to make. Your circumstances are always going to be there. They're not going to change. You need to change. You need to adapt. So even if you've got to move out of your country eventually or really be the person who, the first person who stands up to say, we are fed up with this mm -hmm. and we're actually fabulous, 
If that is your purpose that you are put on this earth for, you got to find that and do it. You know, lean in has been a philosophy that's been, um, you know, Sheryl, Sheryl Sandberg, mm -hmm. her philosophy has been critiqued quite a bit mm -hmm. because even she has come back and is going to really rethink sort of this model. When you have three kids and you have three fabulous kids and you're fabulous, uh, what does fabulous look like? Are you leaned in? What does being fabulous look like in your life? I think for me is that I come from a background where I believe each person is an individual. It is something which, funny enough, after the divorce and being on my own with my children, I got a lot of flack from a lot of people because the way that I was bringing up my daughters, it didn't, it didn't resonate with too many people because it was a case of I was accused of allowing them to have um, too much freedom. Uh, there were very many things, but I think for me what, what fabulous really means is allowing each of my daughters to grow into their individuality, to be able to stand firm, and I think for me the biggest thing as well was if anything should happen to me during the course of, of the next few years, that they could stand up and carry on without me. So for me, that is being fabulous. I am who I am, this is who I am, and this is the way that I'm going to live my life. And this is the message that I very much wanted to carry over to my daughters. And in retrospect now, and with writing the book and looking at their lives, I actually now realize, you know what? Yes, I think objective achieved to a large extent. And now it's a case of having to pass this on to the next generations. Wow. Once this tour is sort of complete, uh, are you going to do seminars, workshops, and you're going to bring more fabulous women into the conversation? What are some of your goals? There's a lot of exciting things coming up with us. I think Ruth also mentioned it, but they we could never have anticipated what the impact of this book would have been. We've gotten such great feedback from men and women, funny enough, just saying that thank you so much, I could relate to every single story and you know I also have a story to tell. So there's definitely a few things coming up. Um, I don't know if we can talk about it yet, but absolutely we're not done being fabulous just yet. Ruth, Mickey, what I'm inspired by the most is that you were courageous enough to take something that was in your head and put it out there for the world to be inspired by. Mm -hmm. And you didn't just think regionally, you thought globally. Mm -hmm. I just want to say congratulations. Thanks for coming inside of our C-suite to be able to have a conversation about going from fed up to fabulous. I'm thrilled. And you'll be able to catch more of this. I think the website is www.fedup2fabulous. From, from fed up to fabulous. From fed up to fabulous dot com. Not that C or that Z-A. Thank you so much. We wish you all the best on the journey. I'm looking forward to downloading it, reading it myself. And you'll find us next week on Inside of Her C-Suite with more inspiring women.